Um, he runs Las Vegas. Uh, nobody better to speak about this. His average rep probably does anywhere around six to eight installs. Uh, what was your best week in the field ever? How many sales? Uh, I did 23 installs, but I went to Dallas that week, so I could have, I didn't work Sunday, Monday. He did. He did. He's telling me why he could have done more. <laughs> he did 23 installs, so not 23 leads, which is easier than writing an app. Or not easier, but it's like three to one. Anyway, 23 installs, not 23 apps in a week. 23 installs. Probably did 30 plus apps for this to happen. So when you look at how many apps you do in the field in a week, think about if you did 30 <laughs> and then the paycheck. So when you look at standards and expectations, my best week was six. No offense, this was 30. But you could fit your production into his multiple times over again, right? <laughs> so not saying you're bad, but he's gonna talk to you guys about the ability to retrain somebody. The average person in his office probably does six to eight insults, the average. Okay, top people are doing 10 plus, 12 plus, 15 plus. Okay, so you can't get promoted to leadership in this guy's office unless you're doing six plus installs. Not six apps, it's installs. There's a difference between those two. Okay, not saying he's better than you, but you might want to perk up when he talks about the ability to train an individual. And you'll hear him maybe say, I don't know, hopefully he does. I'll, then I'll make him. Anyway, the top trainer in our business, I always say there's a guy or a gal that can sell a pen. Right, you heard the guy on Wolf of Wall Street? Why right, Jordan Belfort was really good, he's got a bunch of people to sell shit for him. Right? The ability to be able to duplicate yourself is your worth in life. Okay? That's why the majority of people that invent things never make as much as a guy or gal that gets it out to the public. The guy or guy that gets it out to the public is able to get that invention out to the majority of people and will always make more revenue than the person that invented it, which is kind of screwed up. Right? But to be able to get it out to the public or to be able to get this message relayed, to be able to say, I'm good at sales, that's, I'm only one dimension. But to be able to say, no, I'm not only good at sales, but every single person I work with gets really, really good at sales, you will sell less. You will actually, I haven't sold anything in eight years, and that's not me bragging or being arrogant. I got way better at training and recruiting what these guys talked about, not so much just being the top salesperson across the country. Right? But if you look at his ability to talk about training, you should probably dial into it. Hopefully you guys can increase your app count as well. Sound good? He's got, he's got stupid money. He's got Escalades, Mercedes, Benzes, and houses in Vegas. He's building his team. He's got like five babies. Yeah, but he's like, he is, he is, he is happening right now. Like he's in that moment in the business. He he's, uh, wants to be the first regional ever at Costco. I mean, hit, I got in his car and I go, what, what, what is this? You, you got 24 inch rims on your Escalade? He got 26s. I was like, dude. <laughs> That's what he's into, okay, and he, he does unbelievable stuff in the business. He's got the money side, the family side, uh, huge operation in Vegas. His best week ever in Vegas in four stores was 300 apps? Uh, 315. 315 apps in four stores. His average warehouse is doing over 100 apps in a week. Some shit happened, but it still happened, right? And he's going to talk to you guys about retraining and uh, days of one through five. So, Eddie Rodriguez. <laughs> Um, a lot of you guys, 
Uh, I know, you know, just working with leaders in my experience, uh, having, you know, uh, my guys training or whatnot, sometimes you get that guy that takes a new guy out and they almost look at it as a chore. Like, oh man, you know, my sales are going to go down because now I've got to, you know, go work and teach this guy how to do the ropes. And, you know, they take him out with the wrong mindset and the wrong mentality. So, you know, understand when you take, um, when you get the opportunity to retrain or, you know, duplicate yourself, it's a privilege, right? It's an opportunity for you to grow in the business, right? Because this is what it's going to take for you to, you know, get to the next level. So you should really take it upon yourself to take pride and, you know, um, you know, show effort that you want to get this guy going by any means necessary. Now that doesn't mean that we're, you know, trying to make a, a gold out of a rock, you know. But on the same note, this guy has potential, and you know, you see that he could potentially help you hit your goals. It's important for you to help him reach his. So going with the right mindset on your end, um, you know, looking at it as more of a privilege and your opportunity to grow in the business. Um, you want to set expectations, and when I talk about set, uh, setting expectations, this is huge uh, in my office. A lot of times people um, wait to play defense rather than <coughs> offense. So for me, I, I set expectations early on, right? So when you talk about setting expectations, I'm going to set them two ways. The first way is, um, I'm going to let them know that in order to pass training, they got to do four deals in five days, right? So my conversation goes like this. Hey, uh, uh, Johnny Bloggett, um, so we're going to uh, have you go out into training. You know, the third part of our hiring process is paid training. It doesn't necessarily mean we're going to bring you on board, but we definitely feel um, you've got the potential and the skill set to do well in our program, right? So in order to be, uh, for you to pass training, you're going to need to do four deals in five days. Okay, now keep in mind this is not rocket science because let me ask you a question. How many people do you think walk through, let's say, a Sam's Club or a, or, or a Costco um, per hour, um, you know, whatever or whatnot? He's going to say some number like 100, 500, 1,000, whatever, right? So whatever he says is the right answer, right? 100 people, right? 100 people, okay? So how many hours are you going to work, um, you know, on a daily basis and whatever? Answer he gives you, you're gonna say, yeah, I know this for sure because Sally at the front, she has a little clicker, right? So when people walk in, if me and you walk in together and I have one card, they're gonna count us as one person. So every hour, 100 cards walk through that walk through that door. I know this for sure. Okay, so you're gonna work in, on average an eight hour shift, right? So how many people, does that give you the opportunity to talk to you throughout the course of the day? 800 people, right? It's not, it's easy math. Right? So over 800 people, we're probably going to try to find two or three people out of 800 to sign up with DirecTV. So we're looking for people who either don't have DirecTV or unhappy with their service or they're paying too much and they want to take advantage for our promotion. Right? So it's more of a search not itself. Right? So I'm setting these expectations starting out. Right? So I'm making it more of a numbers game, trying to get him into that psychological mindset that I need him to be in. Right? Um, and I'm going to tell him, you know, we work off law of averages. I'm going to tell him that um, in order to, the, the three reasons why he normally wouldn't pass training, I'm going to say I need you to do four deals in five days. And there's three reasons why you typically won't do that. One is because we didn't train you properly. Okay, now I'm going to do my best to make sure I communicate the information to you. You know, and if I'm not, let me know because some people are visual, some people are hands-on. And if I'm not giving you the information, I need to know so we can make sure we get it to you. Okay, the number two reason is that we're training you and you're not applying the training that we're giving you. Okay, so I'm telling you it's going to take you 100 notes to get one. You're not, you're not doing what we're telling you, okay? Or number three, you're socially awkward and you're just not working. Right? But those are really the only three reasons why you shouldn't pass training. So I'm setting expectations going out. I'm also letting him know, like, hey, Mr. You know, Johnny Ballgame. So, hey, we're going to go in the store today. You seem a little bit more reserved. I'm, I'm a little bit more animated. So what I'm going to do today, i got to talk to everybody, right? Because my focus today is I'm trying to get three or four deals throughout the course of the day. This is what I have to do to get a deal. Okay? So what I want you to do going in, and maybe a little bit overwhelming for you, I just want you to talk to people. Get comfortable with just saying hi, right? And then I want you to duplicate or do what you feel is comfortable, but the objective is to get 8 to 12, uh, 12 people back to the table. And I guarantee you, if you get 8 to 12 people back to the table, I will get you a deal. I'm going to work with you, not for you. Any person that you get back, you know, I hope you close. If I get back, it's my deal. Okay? I also tell them that the perfect day is four deals in a day. Right? This is how it's going to work. So I'm setting all these expectations before he hits the road. I'm going to say, the perfect day goes like this. Okay, we're going to work together. I'm going to do most of the heavy lifting. Because if you bring somebody back, I'm going to close that deal for you. Okay? Now the first deal is always going to be yours if you bring them back and I feel like you're working. Okay? The second and third deal are going to be my deal. Okay? And the reason why we do this is I'm doing the heavy lifting. I'm talking to everybody. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing most of the work. Right? A perfect day is we get that fourth deal. If you're working, you get two, I get two, we walk out the deal, we both ring bell, this is how it's gonna go. 
Right, so I'm setting all these expectations going into the field before he even is filled. So he already knows what's going to happen, right? So when he goes out there and he's taking 100 no's or the, the doors are open and it's a stampede, he's not being overwhelmed. He knows this is what he told me, what to expect, right? This is very important. Know your retrain. So Zach talked about it. Diamante talked about it. People sign up for different reasons, right? So if you took the last um, 90, 100 customers that you signed up with, right, 90% of them are going to sign up in the choice package with three TVs, right? But you signed up because the fact that you're now getting an H, uh, HD box in your second bedroom. You signed up because you're a diehard Bronco fan. You want to get the NFL Sunday ticket. You signed up because you want the gift card. It's all the same package. People sign up for different reasons. People come join this job for different reasons. I was the guy that was just looking to come in transition to make $1,000 real quick because I got laid off my last job. So if you'd have told me management early on, yeah, I was interested in management, but I probably wouldn't have believed it. Right? So I just came on and my, my, my outlook changed on the business as I started to see things, started to see the meeting, see the opportunity that was there. So know your retrain. Know why they started. Are they here for that summer internship? Are they here you know, to make $1,000? Do they want to make it to management? Do they want experience? So know, know who you're talking to. People don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. One thing about leaders is they want to beat their chest off of what they've done in the past and recognize that this person that you're taking out today has never seen what you've done or what you're capable of. So every person that you take out, you've got to reinvent yourself. It's a first impression all over again. Okay? Um, lead by example. Do as I do, not as I say. I'm going to show you versus tell you. I'm going to show you what it's going to take. I'm going to show you how to generate revenue. I'm going to show you how to be compliant. I'm going to show you how to build relationships in the stores. I'm going to show you all these things. I'm not going to just tell you this is what you're supposed to do. I'm going to show you this is what, I, you know, this is what it's going to take for you to be successful in our program. Have patience. So um, if they don't learn how you teach, teach them how you learn. If I ask you guys right now to spell in Minio, right? Some of you guys are going to look up to the left and you're going to try to spell it out in your head. Some of you guys are going to write it down. Some of you guys are going to clap, right? Everybody learns different. So our objective is not to get frustrated with our applicant because they're not picking, up a, picking it up as fast as we would like or they don't learn how we learn. Our objective is to communicate the information. So recognize what you're dealing with. Am I, talking, am I dealing with a walker or am I dealing with a talker? The difference is the talker is a little bit more charismatic. I'm a talker, right? I got game. You can't teach game. You got it or you don't, right? A walker is a little bit more systematic. They're a little bit more analytical. Right? It takes a little bit more effort. Right? If I'm a walker and I'm taking out a talker, or if I'm a talker and I'm taking out a walker, it's important for me to show them what it's going to take for them to get a deal, not what it's going to take for me. Because if I show them techniques that I use, my charismatic, gifted gab game, it's not going to work because not everybody can duplicate that. Okay? So um, uh, have patience when you're, you know, obviously uh, working with the person. Recognize what, what, what their learning style is. The 80% 80, uh, 80 rule, 120% rule. You guys know what that is, right? 80%, 120%, they're gonna do 80% of what you do wrong, or right, and 120% of what you do wrong. So, if they see you bring a, a, a drink back to the table, they're gonna think it's okay for, you, for them to eat at the table, right? If they see you take an extra 10 minutes on your break because you have to run to the ATM real quick because you have a bill to be paid, they're gonna think it's okay for them to do something crazy like that as well. Or stop before you go to the store. You know, they're going to do everything that you do wrong and, and 80% of what you do right. So if you're asking him, hey, uh, Don, I need you to go out there and write 10 deals today, but you yourself are only writing five or six, guess what? Their production is going to be less than yours. The best way to drive sales in your office is for you to go out there and set the pace from the front. Show them how to do it. Okay? Go straight to the store. Um, you know, some of you guys, you know, when we do a morning atmosphere, we go from morning atmosphere, go straight to the store. Some of you guys stop at your house. You know, you might go do something, or run an errand, or do something rather than go to the store. I know for Costco, we're very strict. They require us to go straight to the store. I know Sam's Club is a little bit more lenient. Um, either way, go straight to the store when you're supposed to. You know, be, be, be the example. You know, you don't want to show your new train um, that you're walking in later. It's okay to walk in 10 minutes later, you know, um, to just not do what you're supposed to do, right? You know, during this first week of training, and ultimately, as you're building your team, it doesn't matter if it's the first week, six week, whatever, you want to be the example, right? People are going to duplicate what they see rather than what you tell them, okay? Show them money. This is big. 
You know, you talk about building a team, you gotta go out there and set the example. You can't make excuses. You know, you yourself have to be productive. You're trying to train somebody on how to sell, you yourself have to sell as well. You gotta take your plan. Gotta, it's gotta be pressure on you, not negative pressure. Some people, you know, when you talk about pressure, they get all flustered and discouraged, and it's, it's, it's a big deal, it's a negative for them. But, you know, pressure's a privilege. Put pressure on yourself when you go to the field, show them money, show these guys, you know, how to be productive, right? People will do what they see, not, not what you said. And then have a set structure for your training. So one thing that I learned, um, you know, when I first went out with my promoting manager, uh, we went out to Houston, Texas, and I remember we were sharing an office. He was running his side, I was running my side. And one thing that I noticed um, initially um, was that his leaders were all doing things different. So, you know, Maurice had his way, and then, you know, Ed had his way, and then Art had his way, and then what happens when we all get together? It's like a cluster, yeah, you know what I mean? You know, it's a cluster, nobody's, not a whole lot's being accomplished, but what happens also if, you know, Maurice goes into a slump, right? I have to really kind of dig into to what he's doing to figure out where he's inspiring rather than having a set structure, and I could, like, it used to be so structured in my office, and it's kind of, kind of gotten away from it, we're getting back to it, to where we used to do like a pitch Olympics, to where I would have, you know, my guys break up in two teams, and then each guy would go for 30 seconds. Hey, how are you doing today? Quick question, when you came in, did you guys see what Costco's doing? And then it'd be like a relay race, and I'd have a timer, and I'd be like, switch, and then right after 35 seconds, the next guy would jump in, and they'd have to finish a pitch between 10 people. One pitch in line, not ask the same questions as the oh, the repeating, it all have to be in sync, all the, like, the, the fact finding, everything, and that's how structured you want to be. Because the more in tune you can be with your guys and what they're saying, and the less thought they can do when they're out in the field, um, the more productive they'll be. Right? They, they're, they're unconsciously conscious of what they're doing. Cool? So my office training goes as such. Now keep in mind, guys, when you talk about um, when you talk about driving sales, right? So a lot of times people come to my office and they think they have some like crazy sales pitch or some crazy one-liners or some crazy techniques. It's really just a mentality that we focus on uh, when you talk about building uh, somebody from the ground up. Right, so it's very important. Day one, in my opinion, is probably the most important day of training. The reason being is because you're teaching him the fundamentals. Right, so on day one, I'm going to talk about the C factors and why they're important. Smile, eye contact, enthusiasm. Nobody likes a shifty eye salesman, so it's important that if you want to establish trust, if you want to, you know, build confidence with the person, you look them straight in the eye. Right, it builds trust. Right, I'm telling them why we do this, not just hey, C factors, S E. You know, this is what it stands for, is, you know, but I'm telling you the why behind the what? Eye contact, enthusiasm, right? This guy's coming in to buy some chicken or some toilet paper. We're going to talk to him about switching his cable provider, right? How are we going to be able to do that? Emotion, energy, excitement, right? So um, I'm letting you know the reasons behind what, you know, obviously uh, the C factors. The th three types of days, fast morning, slow night, slow morning, fast night, and a steady day, and why it's important. If you get to the store and it's, it's, it's we don't say slow, we say steady. So you get to the store, it's steady. Typically, it's going to pick up towards the end of the night. We know this. That's what a lot of averages say. I believe this, right? A lot of times, you guys are like, yeah, that's what Eddie says, or that's what, they, that's, that's, what you, you know, that's what the leader says, or whatever, but that's not true. If you don't believe the system, it's not going to work for you. So when I go in the store and I know that it's a steady morning, I believe deeply in my heart that by the end of the day, it's going to, it's going to pick up. I know this because the law of averages says this. Right, I'm telling the guy, so if he gets in the store and it's you know, steady, you want to make sure you maintain your attitude, because typically the sales are going to come towards the end of the day, and if you don't have your attitude in place, you're going to miss your opportunity. On the flip side of it, you get to the store, you know, and it's pumping, you got to really recognize. I played football, right? My linebacker coach said, to keep your head on a swivel, right? Why do you keep your head on a swivel? Because if you're not watching around you, you're going to get blasted. You're going to get your feet up above your head, right? It's a bad situation, right? But in our, in our business, we talk about keeping your head on a swivel, um, you need to be aware of your surroundings, what's going on. So if you get to the store and it's cracking, you need to get, let's get going, because this might be your only opportunity to get a deal. You might miss it if you don't get it, go in and you're ready to go right off bat. Right? So being able to know the difference and then a steady day. Right? And here's why. So I'm prepping these guys so when they go into the store and they see these things, oh man, Eddie told me, I'm preempting them. He told me this was going to happen. He told me to maintain my attitude because at the end of the day, I'm going to get a sale the last person I talk to. Um, five types of customers. So I'm telling the guy, hey, 10% of the people you talk to today are going to be rude. They're called dump trucks. They walk around with trash on their back. 
right? And if you let them, they'll walk up and beep, 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 and dump the, sh the tr trash on you, right? <laughs> and now you're the dumb truck, right? Now, now you're the dumb truck, right? So, um, you know, I'm telling them, 10, 10 people are going to talk to you. They're upset. They, they got flat on the way to the store. They just lost their job. You know, they're not excited about their living situation. Whatever it may be, it, it has nothing to do with you, right? That's part of the game. We've got to weed through those people, right? The next person's going to be the quick no. We like those because those quick no's are people that don't want to talk to us. We don't want to talk to people who don't want to talk to us. Our job is to maintain our attitude, right? Time and effort. Hey, you don't want to talk to me? Keep pushing. I'm looking for the next person. The next person's the shopper. They're going to come up and they're going to, they're going to, um, they're going to want to see what you got to offer, but, but, but may not necessarily be ready to buy today. Right? But you still want to pitch him, show what we got. The next person is the professional time waster. This is the guy you're going to recognize. He comes with the military hat. He's got the little, you know, <laughs> got the fire. You know what I'm talking about? Got the pins. You get to talk to him five minutes, and it's a wrap. He's going to sit there and talk about his grandson who has a Costco membership in North Dakota and how, you know, he's refinancing his house and all these other things. You don't want to talk to that guy, right? So we'll keep it away, and then we're searching for the yes. So we got to weed through these people to get to that person. Right, so you know, um, this is part of what we do. Law of averages. Those are analogy that was taught to me on my day one that I still use today. When I talk about law of averages, I don't say 100 no's equals one yes. I say you play basketball, right? Who's your favorite basketball player? Uh, I guess LeBron James. LeBron James. Everybody's gonna say something different. Somebody's gonna say Curry, somebody's gonna say Michael, somebody's gonna say LeBron, everybody's right. Yeah, you're right. I don't watch that. <laughs> so LeBron's the greatest, right? Let me ask you a question. So you and LeBron have a free throw contest, right? You can play basketball, right?